And so now we're going to move on down the line to our guest, David Kent, who has this week's book review. As you can see, it ties into our title there with Bible Accuracy. And uh, we'll be taking your phone calls if you have any questions here or anything else. That is our number. This is June 21st. We are live. Uh, so if you're watching us June 21st, just let you know you can call us, and we'll let David Kent go on with the book review here. Okay, we want to. Well, while we're in the media, let's. Uh, we had an sure. interesting little follow-up last point. week. We uh, we were talking about Pat Robertson's prophecy that um, a meteorite or a hurricane was going to hit Orlando, Florida, because the Disney Corporation had uh, endorsed Gay Day, and Orlando had declared it Gay Month or something. And um, National Public Radio picked this up and did a quite an amusing little three or four minute piece, uh, a parody or satire that Harry Shearer did um, based on Robertson's prophecy. They, um, they called it something like the National Christian Weather Prediction Channel. <laughs> and they went on for three or four minutes and had a lot of fun with the idea. And sure enough, uh, later in the week, NPR usually uh, reads a couple of email, is a well feedback section where they read a couple of emails uh, that they get in, a couple of uh, uh, phone calls in response to their programming, and sure enough, there was a response from a Christian, and he said, well, I just do not know how NPR, supposedly neutral, can uh, put on a satire such as this that makes Christians look completely ignorant. <laughs> and so I'm thinking to myself, well, let's see, maybe Christians are completely ignorant. Hey. And, uh, so I was looking through this book this week, and I found a very interesting little um, item that relates to that. Um, well, go ahead and tell us the book. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's present the book can here so you can... Can we get a zoom? I got it. All right. This is called Eyewitness to Discovery. Let's go to one. Um, Hold on. Put it back up there. Beautiful. <laughs> Eye Eyewitness to Discovery. This is edited by Brian Fagan. It was published in 1996 by Oxford University Press. It should be in most... Uh, branches of the public library. Uh, subtitle, First Person Accounts of More Than 50 of the World's Greatest Archaeological Discoveries. And this is not the kind of archaeology that you're going to see in the new movie on the X-Files. Uh, this is the real stuff, and it's uh, very interesting writing. Well, the interesting thing that I found in this book, skimming through it, was that uh, in the year I was born over in Crystal Cave, Nevada, a mummy was found, and uh, he was pretty well intact. He had two moccasins on, he had a, um, a skin coat, and he was wrapped in a shroud of a couple of matte reeds. So the state of Nevada bundled him up in a box and kept him in the uh, Nevada State Museum for years and years. And finally, in 1996, a man came out from the University of California in Riverside and said, I want to do a, an accelerator mass spectrometry radiocarbon dating test on your mummy. And so he was given a little sample of hair, and he, he ran this test, and he discovered that this mummy is 9,400 years old. Interesting. Now, that is more than 3,000 years before the creation of the world, according to the Christian idea. Mm -hmm. This is way past Adam's grandpa. <laughs> and um, so I'm thinking, yeah, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, this addresses that Christian's email Christians really are ignorant. Hey, okay. I mean, this, here, right, as close as Nevada, we have a proof that the Jewish and Christian story of creation is false, is phony. It was, they were bad guesses, and they were wrong. And uh, we have the, uh, the proof right in front of us. And so I began to go through the, uh, through the book, uh, and I found several other in interesting things. I'm certainly, uh, certain these would be interesting to a Christian or a Jew. But uh, a lot of material that is interesting to atheists, they have a, the account by the man who discovered Lucy. That's the oldest human skeleton ever found. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, this is not a single bone that uh, somebody constructed a skeleton around. This is an intact skeleton. Uh, the oldest person we know of, 3 million, 3.2 million years old, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the account by the person who discovered that's in here, uh, Jean-Francois, Champollion, uh, his account of how he translated, how he broke the code of the Rosetta Stone so that we can read Egyptian hieroglyphics now, that's very well, that, that's interesting reading. Uh, Rawlinson's story of how he cracked the cuneiform code is here. Howard Carter, most people know about the uh, story of the Valley of the Kings where he discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun. Uh, 
first person story, uh, Gertrude Bell, I mentioned last week where she discovered the ziggurat of Tiglath Pileser I. Um, John Allegro, John Marco Allegro was a, uh, a well known atheist. He's the person who wrote the, uh, participated in and wrote up the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, There's still a lot going on with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes, oh yes, there is, which uh, proved that Christianity existed before the time of Christianity. Quite an embarrassment. Mm, mm. Uh, Kathleen Kenyon, uh, her story of the excavation of Jericho is, is in here in her own words. Arthur Evans, who uh, excavated on the island of Crete. Uh, this has a bearing on uh, Judaism and Christianity directly because he, uh, he looked into the Minoan civilization, at the Palace of Canossus, where the labyrinth was uncovered. Um, he discovered that um, according to their legend on the island, um, the leader of the people was supposed to ascend into the mountain there every nine years. Um, all the people had to stay below. He went up to the top and he got a tablet of commandments from um, uh, the god of the mountain uh, to govern these people for nine years. At the end of nine years, because things change, he was supposed to go up and get another tablet and come back down and govern them for another nine years. The interesting thing about this was, this is 1500 BC. This was hundreds of years before anybody came up with the idea of Moses and Mount Sinai, which was old theater. This was copycat. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the Old Testament, Moses is called the friend of God. That exact phrase was used to describe uh, King Minos um, on the island of Crete uh, a couple of hundred years earlier. Uh, it's strictly a copycat thing, so that the s main set piece of the Old Testament, the business of Moses and the uh, ten, ten suggestions, ten and, the, uh, <laughs> and, and Mount Sinai, uh, was uh, strictly a copycat. And this is important to realize. The book is good for one, uh, uh, for that reason. You'll discover where all the myths and the legends in the Bible came from, what their actual origin is. There's quite a few of them. Uh, yes, yes, there were, and this is, this is one of the major ones. And it's important right now, believe it or not, because uh, right when uh, the uh, Ista Commandment has been defeated in Congress and we have uh, people arguing for religious vouchers and more support, uh, government support of religion, uh, right now legislation has been introduced just this last week, uh, what is being called the Ten Commandments Defense Act. If this thing is passed, the Ten Commandments are going to be posted in every public building in the United Shh. States. The U.S. is going to become a Judeo-Christian country, and you'll find these silly little lists of commandments, the first one of which thou shalt is, thou shalt not have any other God before me, which if I were a Christian I would be disgusted with because it makes your God obviously petty and um, arrogant. Uh, well, I, I, you, know, I, you know, the whole thing. Well, intolerant. So, you know, the more you discover about the origin of the so-called Ten Commandments. I mean, it wasn't originally Judeo-Christian. Right. Uh, it came from another culture. It has nothing to do with Christianity, necessarily. But they'll definitely claim it. And they, that's one reason I want to commend, you know, American atheists are doing exactly the right thing. They're making a move into becoming more uh, politically active in Washington, D.C., and I think that the leaders of the country need to hear that mm -hmm. more and more people are seeing through Christianity. Mm -hmm. And when uh, politicians see that, Government is going to stop supporting Christianity. It's going to stop supporting religion, and that needs to happen. Uh, okay. This country can't be turned into okay, a theocracy. Fif <laughs> fifty years ago, okay, fifty years ago, you could you could actually get away with saying, "Well, uh, I'm a Christian," and people could say, "Would not think automatically ignorant." Uh, <laughs> in the last fifty years, though, Christianity has been disproved in so many ways that. Um, the, there's the answer to the Christian with his email. Yes, uh, Christians are considered ignorant for a very good reason. 